Hi and welcome to this PowerShell tutorial video, continuing our project series here. So we've been taking a look at all these beginner project ideas that I've mentioned in a couple videos ago and that I have posted on my GitHub. Today we are going to be looking at project number three, which is going to be the log file cleanup automation. So this is when we have log files, maybe from multiple different projects, maybe from systems that we've installed that don't have automatic um, log cleanup, uh, which does happen quite often. I've installed some pieces of software that log uh, to a folder uh, and then just keeps adding logs till it fills up your entire drive, uh, especially if you just build the, uh, the servers up to spec and don't give them like any extra space. Um, and then these log files could eventually, even though a log file might only be one megabyte, if they just keep accumulating and you have this system running for four years, uh, it's very, very likely that your drive is going to be filled up. And an easy way is to clean up the old log files. And also it makes it just easier to find the log files that you're looking for. So on this machine here, I have uh, some log folders in my C drive. So I have logs here, which we have a bunch of logs from uh, January all the way to uh, March here. And then we have another log folder again from uh, January to March. So we're going to be cleaning those up. And I'm going to show you how to clean up both, full, uh, both of those locations and actually have different dates set for each one. So let's go ahead and let's actually get started here. So what we're going to be doing is on Visual Studio, I have my script created just a new file called log cleaner. And I also have a CSV file called log directories, which is where we're going to be storing our details for this. So again, like you can have this in a database for a more advanced level project. Um, but for this beginner project, we're just going to be using a CSV file. So what we're first going to want to do, of course, is get our directory list. And we're going to get that from our CSV file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two columns. I'm going to call one column called directory path. And then the second column, I'm going to keep it, I'm going to call it keep for days. And so the first path I'm going to give it is I'm just going to go ahead and just go into the folder here. So this is going to be the first path. And then the second path is just going to be called C logs. Now in the another log folder, I want to keep these for 14 days. And for the logs, I want to keep them for 31 days. Actually, let's do 61 days. Let's just do two months here. All right, so let's just save that. And then in our script, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to specify where we're getting the list of directories that we want to clean up. So what we're first going to do is we're going to create a variable called directory list file path. And we are going to set that to C uh, users. And this is just, you're just going to go and point to that log directories uh, file. So for me, it's going to be in PS beginner projects. And then we have log directories.csv. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a directory list is going to be equal to import dash CSV. And we're going to point to our path, which is going to be our directory list file path. Then we're going to do a for each directory in directory list. We're going to do open and close curly bracket. Let's just run this so we preload. So when we use the dot notation in here, it, it'll just be preloaded with the data that we need. So what we first need to do is we need to grab all the files. So the way that we're going to be doing that is going to be get child item path. And then we're going to do a directory dot directory path. All right. So if we do that here, 
we are going to see that we get all of our files. Now, this is going to get all the files, which is not what we actually want. So all we want here is going to be, we are going to want to pipe that into where object, and that's going to be the last write time. Because we don't want to actually get, grab the time that the file was created because logs create a file and then keep writing to it. And we want to make sure that we only uh, delete the logs based on the last write time. So when that log is finally done, like let's say an application writes to a log every day, we want to make sure that we only get, I guess at that point, the created date would also be fine. Um, but if you have something that creates logs um, and the max log size, let's say is is five megabytes and it starts creating the file on a Monday and then maybe nothing really happens and it's good till Wednesday uh, of the next week but then it starts a new log file that file a lot happens and that file maybe only covers from Wednesday to Friday uh, so you're going to want to uh, make up that you're not going by the created time because at that point you might be deleting files uh, too late or too early, uh, depending on the situation. Uh, so we're going to do where object last write time, and then we're going to do a dash LT for less than. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a dollar uh, sign and then a parentheses for a variable wrapper. And we're going to do the gash, get dash date, and we're going to do add days. And what we're going to add is going to be a negative dollar sign directory dot keep four days. So that's going to be the negative number of the keep four days column. And the reason why we're doing negative is because we're adding the days, but we want to see um, if the file is less than two months ago. So we don't want to add days. We want to actually subtract days. All right, so now let's actually just run this here to see what it gives us. So here we can see in the logs, which I had only, uh, we want to keep the files for the last 61 days. So here I can actually see that it's only giving me the files for January, whereas the another log folder, we're only keeping them for 14 days. So today is March 31st. Uh, so as we can see, it's giving us tons of days, even all the way to March uh, 7th, which is more than 14 days ago. So that's fine. Uh, so everything looks good. It's giving me tons of days in January and February, and then uh, two of them in uh, March, March 1st and March 7th. And if I go look at another log folder here. And so 14 days from today would be, just wondering if that one should also be in there. Oh yeah, it is also in there. March 9th is in there, so that's okay. Uh, let's just make sure. And then the 16th, that would actually be uh, plus 14. That one might, be in there as well. Uh, yep, so the 316th, March 16th, that one should be there, but March 18th should not, because that would 14 days from March 18th would take us into April, and it's only March 31st at the time of the recording of the video. So that works. So then what we want to do is we want to delete these files that are older than the days. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go ahead and pipe this. Now, the thing that's happening here is we, we have a really long line and I don't really like that. So what we could do is we could store the get child item into a variable and then um, pipe that variable to where object, but we could also just keep this in one line per se. But what we'll want to do is right before we pipe, uh, we're just going to want to do a space after the path. If we do a back tick, you can actually do an enter here and you could keep going as if you were on the same line. So if we do a back tick at the end, so we have a back tick here and another back tick here, and then we have the pipe. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a remove dash item. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a confirm is equal to false. And we're just going to make sure that we force that as well. So that should actually work. So now if we run this, it should clean up both of those directories um, with the proper days that are left. So let's go ahead and let's clean that up. So if we go into the C drive here, another log folder. So here we have, we only have the last 14 days worth of logs here. And then in the log folder, we've actually kept the last 61 days. So we're actually going into uh, even all the way into February here. So that's perfect. So everything is working great. So then the only thing left to really do is to actually automate this task. Now, you could create a log of what you're deleting, um, but because you're only affecting log files and you're really cleaning up the log files, I probably wouldn't recommend really logging this, but it's definitely a option if you guys uh, really, really want to log this. Um, it is doable. Uh, you could just log in a text file or in a database what files uh, you've deleted. Now, let's say, for example, that you also you could add something in here in the log directories CSV, uh, something like a file uh, name. So if you have naming conventions for your logs and you store all the logs at the same spot, you can also have this file name and you can also store uh, different days based on the file name. All that would be is if we had that, let's, so let's use this as an example. So what we're going to do is file name. Oops. Uh, so let's just do in here. We're just going to put a star and that's going to capture everything. Uh, and then in the C logs, what we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to put, as long as it has the word test in it, and then C uh, logs again, we're only going to want to keep for seven days to where this is. Actually, let's do test seven days. Actually, test seven days, 61 days, we're going to make it prod. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to change some of these names here. So we have uh, in the logs uh, folder here, we're going to name uh, some of these files here. So seven days. So let's see here. Let's just rename some of these. So services, we're just going to do test here. Uh, let's rename this one as well. We'll do test. And let's do, uh, let's do fraud on this one. And let's do Let's start deleting some of these. So this one's going to be uh, test services, test services. So let's change some of these to prod here. Actually, I should probably name these all the same. So let's just rename this here to test services test services and here we're just going to change that to prod services and prod we want to keep for 60 days so let me just change one of these And we change this one as well. Okay, so now we have prod services and test services. Those are our file names. And then 
another log we just want to keep everything for 14 days that's going to be fine and that really nothing will change there so what we can do is where we have the get child item what we can also do is going to be filter and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do a wrapper here and then you're going to do a directory dot file name uh, and then a star at the end so that should be good let's just do a what if just to see what happens here so if we just go ahead and run this so as we can see it is removing all those test uh, services here and not the production one. And that's because we only said, we only wanna keep the last seven days worth of test services, but keep the 61 days worth of prod services. So even if you store all your log files in one central location, you can just give it a, like a file pattern because all your logs are probably gonna be named differently based on the application that's writing to them. Uh, and you can keep them for a specific set amount of time. So. That would be how, uh, that's how you would do that. Uh, now you would wanna automate this, of course. Now I would automate this only once a day. So once again, like the other uh, tasks that we've had, we just go into the task scheduler. We go ahead and create the task and we just go uh, call it log cleanup here. And we're just gonna run whether the user is logged on or not. Run with the highest privileges. And we're going to have a trigger of a daily trigger and we're just going to run this let's say every night at 10 p.m and then we're just going to do an action and we're just going to go ahead and browse for that log cleaner we're going to do pwsh for powershell 7 dash file space click on OK, click on yes, and then click on OK again, and then put in the password for that account. And that is now running. So that's how you would uh, set up a log cleanup automation. Now, I call it a log cleanup automation, you could use this just to clean up old files. Um, there is also a property called last access time. So maybe if you want to just clean up something uh, based on the last time you've accessed it, like let's say you want to set this job uh, to clean up your downloads folder. Uh, you could definitely base it on the last access time. And this way it just keeps your downloads folder uh, pretty clean because that tends, for me anyways, tends to kind of fill up with just random garbage that I never go back to use. Uh, so that will be this one. And in the next video, we're gonna be uh, keep going on through the simple backup system and then the one-off account creator, account membership cloner, account lockout checker, and account password expiry alert. So be on the lookout for those. I will be posting the code for this in the GitHub, which that will, will also have a link in the description down below. So once again, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also drop in the comments. Uh, if you guys have any questions and wanna see videos on those questions, let me know down below and hit that notification bell to be notified on the next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.